Gloria Steinem is a prolific author, passionate human rights activist, and co-founder of New York Magazine and Ms. Magazine. The other day, in preparation for this, I pulled your book, Moving Beyond Words, off of my bookshelf. And it's the one with the red cover where you're wearing the blue cowboy boots that are so hot. Um, and I opened it up, and the page that I opened it to, you wrote, God may be in the details, but the goddess is in the questions. And when we begin to ask them, there's no turning back. What have been the questions that have been the most important for you to ask? I think the basic questions are still, they're not exactly questions, but they're the ones when we're very little and we say things like, it's not fair, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is really asking, why is this happening, you know, or you are not the boss of me. And that is like a flower or like a seed trying to bloom. Uh, and we need to question whatever it is that keeps, keeps it from blooming. What is the state of women? today? We're not even at equal pay yet, okay, and that's something everybody agrees on. Um, and if you consider in a larger sense that, okay, we've demonstrated to most people that women can do what men can do, okay, that's halfway there because we haven't demonstrated that men can do what women can do. Women are sometimes raised to know what the other people are feeling more than we know what we ourselves are feeling. The point of empathy is not to value other people more than yourself, but as, as much as yourself. And masculinity, through no fault of guys who get born into this too, is the reverse. You know what you're feeling, and you don't necessarily know what other people are feeling. I mean, you know, how many men have you heard say, I don't know, I thought she was perfectly happy. She just <laughs> left after 20 years. We, we know we have something to say because someone listens. Not because, you know, we say something that's so smart and then people listen. We need the listening first. So, <laughs> so if, we just, if we just listen and don't, uh, don't exert this kind of tyranny of expectation, you know, that we, I think you're going to behave this way because you're a male person or a female person. Right? How do other cultures integrating into our culture affect the feminist movement today? They're part of it. I mean, the, the, the women's movement has always been very global because the problems, I mean, sweatshops don't stop at the border and sex trafficking doesn't stop at the border and violence against women doesn't stop at any border. What I've learned and what we've all learned from, from domestic violence, which is the model for all violence, is that the most dangerous time is when a woman is about to escape or has just escaped. That's when she's most likely to be killed, right? And I think this country is escaping. We have, uh, we're about to be uh, a non-European American majority for the first time pretty soon. We've turned against two wars much more quickly than we did against Vietnam. We're very critical of, of Wall Street now in a way we didn't used to be. We have an African-American family in the White House. And that tells me two things with, given the model of, of family violence. One is, it is a time of maximum violence and we have to be careful and we have to take care of each other. And the other is that we're not gonna stop. We would never tell a woman to stay in a violent home, and we're not going to tell this country to go backward. Finish these sentences for me. I am most excited about... Understanding. Aha. I love that moment when you suddenly see <laughs> why, the why of something. You know, it makes you laugh. I'm most curious about... I am most curious about original cultures. In the original languages, there was no gender in the language. I mean, it's say in Cherokee here, and many of the Native American languages, there was no gender. It's true of the Quay and the San in Africa, of the uh, Dalits in India, of the, the original cultures. Didn't have this concept of controlling women in order to control reproduction. You had a very eclectic religious upbringing. Your uh, mother's side was Presbyterian, your father's side was Jewish and you had some theosophy thrown in the mix with your grandmother. Can you talk about how that influenced you? Kids are 
somewhat nat naturally spiritual. I think they 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 care about animals. They see spirits or feel life in plants and in flowers, and you know all living things are alive. But then institutionalized religion comes along and tells us that God looks like the ruling class. It's a white guy. <laughs> That we uh, that that not all emotions are are sacred or godly, you know. I mean, one of the ways you can tell real spiritual traditions is that people are not afraid to laugh. You write about your time in India as being a pivotal time in your life. Well, it, it did make me understand that radical doesn't mean violent; it just means going to the root of something, right? So when one says radical feminist, it just means somebody who says, look, these gender roles train us in our families very early for the race and the class and so on that comes later. Gender is made up. Race is made up. It doesn't exist. I am most disturbed by... I'm most disturbed by the degree to which we say either or instead of and, by the fact that we rank everything instead of linking, that our model is a hierarchy instead of a circle. I'm most happy when... I'm most happy when I don't know why. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm just walking somewhere and you suddenly feel kind of uh, content or well-being, a sense of well-being, a sense of connection with everything. It doesn't come out of accomplishment necessarily or anything you've looked forward to or anything predictable. What kind of message would you leave on a coffee cup? Hope is a form of planning. So hope. Yeah, you're coming. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> Watch out. Oh, thank you. Hey. Hey, Connor. How'd it go? It went great. The interviews were enlightening, uplifting, exhausting. It was awesome. You know, I was thinking, if you would interview Ray Lewis or maybe even Ocho Cinco, and maybe more people will watch your show. Who? Yes, operator. I need the number for a Mr. Last Name Cinco, first name Ocho. C-I-N-C-O.